Welcome to the Freelance Musician Podcast, the podcast to encourage, inspire and support you on your freelance journey. I'm your host, Hannah Mitchell Harrison. Welcome to episode one of the Freelance Musician Podcast. I'm so excited to finally be bringing this out into the world. It's a project that's been on my heart for a little while now. And as the coronavirus has pushed the pause button on life as we know it, I've had the time and space to get this project underway. If I'm honest, for the last month or so, I've ummed and ahed over whether now was the right time to release this podcast. I mean, no one knows when or how the music industry will recover, and many of us are sitting at home with empty diaries for the immediate future. But my aim for this podcast is to provide help, advice, encouragement, and inspiration for freelance musicians. And if there was ever a time that we needed that, it's right now. So know that this podcast comes from a place of wanting to support Valley musicians, and give some sense of hope as we look ahead to when life begins to settle down. So first of all, let me introduce myself. Who am I? I'm Hannah, and in all honesty, I'm just a shy, small town Welsh Valleys girl. I didn't go to a specialist music school or have endless music opportunities growing up. I was never the loudest, the funniest, or the coolest girl in school. I had a happy, safe upbringing with a small but close group of friends. Now, my mum has a piano school, so I grew up surrounded by piano music. Other people's piano lessons were the background noise of my childhood and teenage years. And in fact, as a small child, I thought that everyone played the piano and I just couldn't understand how someone would not know how to read music. At school, I was known as the one who plays the piano. And whilst on the one hand, it was nice to have something to attach my identity to, as I grew older, I began to resist the expectation that I would go on to study music. When it came to university, I chose to study for a joint honours degree in music and French at Exeter. I was determined to prove that there was more to me than just music. Except I was wrong. I really hated French at university, like absolutely hated it. It wasn't so much that I couldn't do it, but I just didn't gel with my tutors or the department in general. And if I'm honest, I found the lectures quite boring. By the end of the first year, I had accepted that my real love was for music after all so I switched to a single honours music degree and I really loved it. And even after all this, I still wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I grew up. And it wasn't until my piano teacher at Exeter said, I hope you're going to apply to do a postgrad diploma in performance at Music College, that I started to give thought to music as a possible career. I just hadn't thought that I was good enough, but I secured a place at the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama. I really loved my time there. It ignited in me a real passion for performing and gave me the confidence to believe that actually I might be okay at it. Towards the end of my degree, a fellow postgrad student asked if I wanted to form a flute and piano duo. And that was that. I didn't leave college with a plan of becoming a freelance musician. I just sort of fell into it and made it up as I went along. Fast forward a few years. Okay, actually, it's quite a lot of years. And I'm a girl boss with my own freelance career that takes me all over the world. How did that happen? Like, seriously, how? Sometimes I look back and I think it's all a dream. It wasn't without a lot of tears, hard work, and I had to constantly push myself out of my comfort zone. But it was totally worth it, and I would do it all again in a heartbeat. Now, does that mean I'm a world-class concert pianist performing in top concert venues all over the world? Not even close. But do I consider myself to have a successful career? Well, yes. It's taken me a long time to be able to say that out loud, because as freelancers we are constantly fighting imposter syndrome and comparing ourselves to others who we think are better performers or teachers or whatever role it may be, you can fill in the blank. Maybe you feel someone else has the edge because they are more outgoing than you or they have more connections than you. But who has decided that success is only restricted to one path? Your version of success will look different to someone else's, Success for one person may be gigs that take them all over the world, whereas for someone else, success is being able to work from home every day and not have to live out of a suitcase. For one person, success may be earning enough money to afford a luxury lifestyle, whereas for someone else, success may be having enough work to pay the bills whilst also having the freedom to spend quality time with their family and not work crazy hours. A performing career isn't just a jet-setting lifestyle playing in the top concert venues or a seat in one of the top orchestras. A performing career can be made up of a combination of cruise work, weddings, accompanying, ensemble work. 
This is no less successful than performing on the world stage. It's just different. If you are earning a living from your music making, in whatever form that may be, then you are successful. When someone asks what I do and I tell them I'm a freelance musician, they often say, are you busy? Do you have enough work? The assumption is that it's not possible to have a successful career as a freelance musician. The picture they have in their head is of someone sitting around waiting for the occasional gig to come in, living off beans and toast and wrapped up in layers of clothing because they can't afford to have the heating switched on. So if it is possible to have a successful career as a freelance musician, why is it that so many don't make it? Because it is really hard work. No one is going to hand it to you on a plate. And unless you have contacts in the right places, which some people do, then you have to build from the ground up. There's no easy route. There's no overnight success. It requires a steely determination to push through all the barriers, to bounce back from all the bumps in the road, and there will be many, and an unwavering focus on the end goal. It requires an outside layer of shimmering confidence, when inside you might be a quivering bag of nerves, and an ability to let the opinion of others wash off your back. There will be lots of tears and frustration, but it is worth it if it means achieving your version of success and building a career based around something that you love. Now, as we are in the thick of COVID-19, you might well be wishing that you had chosen a different career, and with good reason. Unless you are teaching online, our work at the moment is virtually non-existent. And the reality is that musicians will probably be one of the last groups to return back to work. But don't forget, this is not a reflection on your career journey so far. We are without work through no fault of our own, and it is a season we have to go through together. Take this opportunity to look back and reflect on how far you've come and acknowledge the hard work that you have put in. Now, I'm sure, like me, you have days when you feel deflated and wonder, what's the point? What is the point of all the hard work, long hours, the mental challenges that come with being freelance? When you feel like this, sit down with a pen and paper, think all the way back to the start of your freelance journey and write down each win that you have had along the way. From the very small to the very big, your first paid gig, your first performing contract, securing some teaching work in a school or privately, juggling work and parenting at the same time, becoming confident enough to speak in front of an audience, earning enough to pay the bills. The list of potential wins is endless, and I guarantee that it'll be a lot longer than you think. Make this list and put it somewhere you can see it every day. Yes, right now life is tough, but let this list be a reminder to you of how far you've come and how strong you are. Because if you are a freelancer, then you are strong. You have to be. Freelancing requires commitment, perseverance, tenacity, and you have those qualities. This in itself is something to celebrate and to give you hope for the future. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope that this episode has in some way left you feeling encouraged. If you've enjoyed what you've heard and you have a moment before you leave, it would really mean the world to me if you could leave a review so that this podcast can reach those who need it. And to make sure that you never miss an episode, just hit subscribe. I'll see you next time for episode number two.